Hi, my name is Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So what we are looking at here is the outside of the inside. Uh, so maybe... <clears throat> So we are looking at the outside of the inside sphere on the Malcolm Bendel eight-year-old Perkins attached large thunderstorm generator. And this sample here, we can see it really does look like it might have our usual suspect spheres. Maybe this is a silicon sphere and this is an iron-rich crenelated sphere. And we are going to have a look. Suddenly this looked like it's a crenelated sphere. Uh, we'll have a closer look at that. A little dirty this one. Looks about ready to break up. So I'm going to change this for something more appropriate to take images. Okay. That looks a bit more like it. So we need to <clears throat> do some uh, setup here, different direction, directly. Okay, close. And we will first take an image of the location, which is there, and which is more specifically there and I will take a image of this and that is on 384 that's fine I think okay and I will do a memory shot of this and uh, we will come out and look at other places. I'm using the DZI image here, and this looks like a productive area. Look at these balls around here. <laughs> uh, this looks very bally. Target rich environment, this. <laughs> Oh dear, look at it. Uh, contrast adjust. And then we will go in a bit. And we will go for a bit of These look like a whole bunch of iron rich crenelated spheres, fairly badly formed, of various scales. Um, okay. 
and they appear to be coated with some other stuff and I probably uh, would hazard a guess that that is silicon dioxide maybe on the outside maybe with some calcium so maybe we'll do a quick map of this just to get an overview of what's going on in this area of the reactor much dirtier than the previous one I looked at <clears throat> good thing is they look like they're well fused in there so hopefully they won't jump about when we up the beam and the energy here Everything's pretty much of a muchness, which means in this area it's really mixing the things together. The different elements, very dynamic area. Okay, so we'll take a look at that under EPS, we go new and we'll call this um, outside of inside. And we will draw, right, no, we'll have a couple of points on this here first. So I think probably this is iron but with a little bit of silicon on the outside, silicon dioxide. Well, I take it all back. It's mostly the content of the steel. Definitely iron, chromium. Obviously oxygen. Now, that's maybe at the pole. What about on the periphery? So, let's take the periphery of this one. So, there might be fairly clean iron and oxygen on the top. But on the side is, might, is normally where I'd expect these other elements like silicon to creep in. What do we get? Not so lucky this time. These are mostly iron and oxygen. Fair chunk of nickel. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there's a silicon creeping in there. <laughs> Not massive amounts. The signal's definitely there. There's the silicon. Yeah, it's seeing the silicon. So that's kind of what we see on these systems is around the accretion disk. You see this silicon peak, which you can see here. Can't quite make up whether to put it in or not. There it is. It's probably not getting enough samples to be sure. Ah, to be sure. Ah, to be sure. And maybe these are more pure iron on these little fluffy bits over here. Wow, okay. So looks like more nickel and the interesting thing is is that inner sphere a different material than the outer sphere iron chrome nickel it's still a type of steel of course Okay, let's go back. We'll add that as a position in case you want to go to it again. See what I can do here is I can go to there and go back to that previous position we were looking at. All the way over here. And now we are in this different mode. We can focus in on this structure again at the same scale in theory. 
like so. And we get our shot again. And what we can do is see if this is a silicon ball and this is an iron ball. Of course, this is deeply in shadow, so we might not actually find anything there. Let's see. So we'll have another one here. First, we'll look at our suspect silicon rich ball. What is that? Well, It's actually more iron. It's like a more pure iron ball. So I can see the silicon peak creeping up there, but no, nope, this is an iron ball. This is a very messy area. I'm going to take a sample of that one as well. And we'll take one of the substrate over here as well. It's fairly prone. an idea of the substrate. Yeah, you see it's struggling to get sampled here. 60, like, spectrometry is getting almost no input data. Yes, because this is deeply in a shadow. Iron, nickel, manganese, chrome. It's a steel. Iron, chrome, manganese. Yeah, really struggling with this because it's in the shadow. It means that the noise floor is a lot higher when this kind of thing happens. See, this is just noise. Um, whereas on here, because it's not in shadow, you get a much smoother thing. There's the, there's the silicon bit. Yeah. And the last sample is this area, which should be easier to see. And actually, there we go. So we actually have silicon, it would seem, in the substrate. There we go. Is that really molybdenum? Maybe. Hmm. Kind of gives the impression that this is a different type of steel than the alpha one. Interesting. Wow. There you have it. Okay, let's go and uh, this is a uh, See what else we can find. Now I suspect these fragments are from when the sample was cut out, particularly that fragment. It definitely looks like a bit has cut out. What have we got here? It's another crenellated sphere there, but it's kind of like in a hole. We've got a crenellated sphere here in a hole. One here. This is lighter, so this might be heavier. So look at that. Oh, well, look at that beautiful one. Look at him. Wow. He's small, but he's very clear. <laughs> Boom. Ah, what a beautiful little thing that is. Look at that. We'll take a shot of that, why not? You basically know what it is, so. Yeah, it's moved. Is it moved? I think it's moved. It's wanting to move. Ah. I think we need to cancel that and see where it's at. It's rotating. Interesting. See what it does when I give it some more electrons. Yeah, it's rotating. Look at that. 
Wow, it's a kind of rolling around in its little socket there. Is it aligning with the field? I don't know. I'm going to cancel that again. And maybe this is the North Pole. Yeah. And maybe now it will be okay with just sitting there. Interesting. Is it going to move? Still moving. <laughs> Are we going to make it jump? Okay, I'm going to... No. Yeah, it's moved less. I think it's directly aligned with the electron beam. That's interesting. We'll take this shot. And then we'll lower the beam energy and maybe it won't rotate so much. But does that mean we're looking directly at the north or the south pole? What do you think? Large piece of what looks like glassy carbon over here. Lots of that kind of stuff. Might be silicon dioxide. In fact, that there looks like it's cracked off this. And I would assume that, not assume, but I would suggest that that is. That was the silicon dioxide on the outside of this material. I think that's what we'll find that is if we can get a look at it. So I'm going to keep it. We're on 15 and point. Let's take it in here. Take another shot. I think we'll find if we can get enough samples in there, that's going to be silicon dioxide. Of course, I've been wrong every other time. <laughs> no, it's the first option I said. Glassy carbon. So 70... Yeah, it's not a diamond, it's glassy carbon. And it's not no samples here. Look at the carbon site, the <laughs> peak. It's like everything. <laughs> it might be that the other element traces here. Uh, certainly the iron is just a reflection off here. Wow. And I imagine that if I fire my beam into here, this is going to be iron rich. It does concern me when I see this nickel and chrome in here, because it might imply that uh, the magnetic forces of the exotic vacuum objects are adding to their magnetic core by ripping some of the steel out. Just something to consider. Okay. Let's go and have a look at our... We'll save that position as well. We like that little ball. And we will come out and we will look for something else. Something else. What is that? I mean, look at this. This is just completely balls everywhere. What is this little thing here? Hmm. Curious. Well, that's rather nice, isn't it? Whatever it is. <laughs> right. 
entirely sure what it is, but quite pretty. I'm rich crenelated sphere, crenelated sphere, crenelated sphere. When they have the other elements in there, they don't form these beautiful iron oxide crystals that are kind of like as you get mutilated. Now I've seen quite a lot of these rods on here and these look like they're kind of like silicon rods. Don't know, we well, can find out in this shot, why not? <coughs> it's rather lovely, isn't it? Go over here just to capture, capture this kind of rod here. Okay. What is this? This looks like it might be a fragment that's been cut. So, but we do see these rods everywhere. What are, what are they? We'll have a quick look to find out what that is. Firstly, it's about 10 microns across. Um, I'll go here, plus, and let's see what this thing is. And does it move? Probably. Ah, uh, yeah, silicon. Sodium, calcium, aluminium, magnesium. Hmm, we're going to look at a bunch of these and see if that's the same kind of elements going on there. What is this thing here made of? don't think it's seeing rubidium myself. I don't think that's a real thing. By weight, it is mostly silicon dioxide. But it has sodium, calcium, aluminium and magnesium in there. This does look like it's a synthesized thing. Is this the thing that's in those coherent flux loops? Maybe, maybe not. And the other bit is iron oxide. Interesting. Are we looking at the inside of a ball? I don't know. Let's see what else we can see. This does look like it's full of <laughs> fragments of cut metal. There's more of this kind of silicon stuff here. There's a long one here. This is look. This looks like a carbon rod. So I think we'll go there and see what this looks like. Yeah. So this looks more silicon. Uh, I don't want to do that. silicon rich here. You can see it's charging. Bits are jumping around on it. And over here, this and this one look more like a carbon rod, the sort of thing that Matsumoto found. So, um, we're going to have a look at those and find out what they are. I'll try and take an image before things jump about. 
Yeah, there was one over there. It's not, oh no, here we go. So we've got three there. We've got one here, one here, and one here. Okay, this looks like carbon more. This looks like silicon. Silicon obviously being carbon and oxygen heat together. Um, right. Uh, is that as good as we can get the focus? Maybe. Didn't want to do that. Too much beam energy on there. I'll cut that down. Hopefully this is a st stuck in the matrix sufficiently that Ooh, hello. Okay. So we're expecting this one to probably be silicon rich. Silicon, calcium, aluminium, magnesium. Don't think there's any rubidium in there, you're making it up. This one, I suspect, is more carbon. CNO, CNO, CNO. <laughs> and it's only CNO. <laughs> Basically, carbon and oxygen, there you go. Bit in shadow. Pretty, pretty conclusive there, 70% carbon, and the rest balances nitrogen and oxygen. This one is essentially, well, it's a selection of elements you would see in these things. So are these going through the flux loops? Is this what you see moving in this system? I 
think these are all fragments from the cutting. <laughs> yeah. I will do this. Yeah. Yeah, lots of fragments from the cutting. Oh dear. Another one of these silicon rich. They're very consistent in their size, aren't they? Well, have a find another one that's in a good spot to look at. One there, but it's in a shadow probably. One there, definitely in a shadow. Be interesting to see if we find one actually coming out of the structure. They're very straight. It appears they've got a very hollow ball there. Look at that one. Uh, so this is on a what's called a dynamic zoom image, DZI. And I will give access to the PC software that allows you to zoom around these images. That looks like a nice piece of rod there. And that one, hmm, there's another one of these kind of florette things here. Interesting. It's very, very regular, aren't they, these things? That's slightly narrow. Interesting, this one, it looks like it's got a bit of a blob on the end. Let's have a look at that one. Definitely looks like silicon again. Hmm, my last uh, <laughs> sampling was uh, at 10 kilovolts. Yeah, rolling around. Okay. When I see these things, I'm also concerned that it's some sort of thermal wool and at some point that the device was wrapped in something like that. Okay, so it may not be a real thing. Nice correlated ball there, but I think we can tell already that that has got um, chromium in it, contamination. Let's see. And it's going to move around. There you go. And I think that if we took a picture of that and looked at it, I'm pretty sure we're going to find that that's got some chromium in it. Question is, is this bit on the outside, is that carbon, glassy carbon? This is a bit messed up, this one, isn't it? <laughs> Let's take a shot of that. A little ball there. Right. You have one on there, and I think it's iron. Does it move? Don't know. And we have another one on this kind of material. Is that carbon rich? So, as I was saying, when it looks like this, it looks like it is uh, got some chromium in there, so it's from the steel. I would imagine. It's 
Oh, interesting. It's got silicon, but yeah, it's mostly carbon and oxygen, but it has 12% magnesium. And that's a synthesized element. I don't think there should be a lot of magnesium floating around in there, unless it's just dust. <laughs> it could be just dust in this instance, but uh, it's right next to that ball structure. So is it? Don't know. But magnesium is double carbon. Double carbon. There are literally balls everywhere. Ball, 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 ball. <laughs> this is a piece that's been cut. <laughs> so is that. This is dirt from cutting the sample. This is interesting. This looks like an agglomeration of balls, and we have our silicon carbon bits in there. Let's go here. Oh, bang on the silicon chunk. I really should change that to 10 to 15. We're going to do some analysis. <laughs> Oops. You can't see the heavier elements if you, if you don't have it up at 15. Uh, okay. This is a more smooth sphere. I think we know what we're seeing here. This might be silicon and carbon. Sodium. Magnesium. There's definitely no rubidium there. Have I actually put this on to 15? Yes, I have. So, <laughs> same story. <laughs> Exclude. Well, look at that. Silicon, sodium, aluminium, calcium, magnesium. These are definitely elements that you would see in dust <laughs> and in synthesized elements are very clear. Look at that. Mostly silicon oxide. This one is probably iron and chromium. Yeah. Carbon, oxygen, nickel. Okay, <laughs> not so amazing, really. Just what it is. I'm going to call that flotsam. It looks like it, really. If I could spell flotsam. Okay. This is a lot of rubbish there. 
So we haven't, at least to my knowledge, found any pure balls. What is this? This looks interesting. This looks like a carbon sphere in the center of here. This looks mighty interesting. Let's go here. And these look like they might move around with a bit too much power on them, unfortunately. Okay, look at that. What have we got in there? What have we got in there? That's moving around. Oh, don't move. <laughs> Stay there. I think that's glassy carbon in there. Oh dear. Okay, I'm not going to take a picture of that because it's going to ch overcharge it and make it move. This might be glassy carbon as well. This might be the sort of stuff that causes twinkles. So we will take a sample there on the center of that. It looks like this glassy carbon. Ooh, look at that. Carbon atomic 66%, 20% oxygen. And no rubidium, there's no rubidium, stop it. <laughs> oh dear. That is where the sample was cut. That's a bit of the stainless steel cut. Interestingly, we might be able to see the substructure from the end of this. Have a look at that. Uh, I guess this is the silicon stuff. I'll just make sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. No rubidium. Definitely a pattern here of this stuff. Gonna have a look closely into that. So this is, uh, yeah, fourteen point three six percent carbon on this stuff, but that is sixty six point two two. That's glassy carbon. Right. So I'm gonna. Try and have a look at the end of that, but first I'm going to leave this a name. There's glassy carbon. And we are going to go here and we are going to look at the end of this because it looks a little interesting if they don't make it move. Can we get a bit of contrast on this? Or is that just stuff stuck to the end? It might just be stuff stuck to the end. This is when you sometimes need to put it on SED and it goes, oh, that's just stuff that stuck to the end. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Right, well. It's not really doing it, is it? <laughs> Maybe there's some flow there, but not so interesting. Okay, let's go back here. Mm -hmm. So many bits of where it was cut. Oh dear. 
These definitely look like fragments from when it was cut. This does look like it's been in the reactor. So I think what's going on is that these might be in the flux leakage type thing. This is iron oxide. We've seen that before. Very frothy iron oxide, isn't it? Um, more like rust. That looks like rust to me. Uh, and you can't see the hydrogen in rust anyway, so that's no good. Not in an SEM, you can't see hydrogen. Uh -huh. Well, this is about that for the sample. Oh, hello. That looks interesting. That looks like a ball with a tail. Let's go and have a look at that. Mm -hmm. And get some illumination on it. These look like some of the structures that uh, Slobodan Stankovic found. It's like a, a plasmoid moving through the air with its tail, its trail. Hmm. Let's put that on next. Interesting. Not entirely sure what I'm looking at there, but definitely looks like a meteorite with a tail. Is this a torus on the here? I don't know. Is this a ball? Is it a broken ball? It's going to be very interesting, but it's a nice shape. <laughs> uh, what is it? Probably stuff from the background. Yeah, it's just the steel. Yes, it's the steel, okay. Not overly inspired with this. Um, that definitely looks like a hollow ball, but more like something that's blown up. It's like an aggregate. And a couple of these kind of egg cup shapes. Let's go and have a look at that. Kind of looks like rust. Actually, that's interesting though. <laughs> that little thing there is more interesting. Well, we'll take a quick picture of that. Oh. 
Right, let's see if this moves when I zoom into it. What is that? <laughs> Is it going to move? Is it? Can't really get much better than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not so interesting. Okay. Yes, I think what I'll do is I'll take one of the more interesting just straight carbon looking structures from the inside or the outside next um, because we're not learning a lot from this particular sample it's mostly detritus and steel and interestingly these silicon and so forth rods 